All right, folks, I'm going to try to finish setting the base colors for Kuyomi here. Um, right now, I don't feel a lot of harmony of color. I've kind of just been putting general colors in. But um, what I want to do is, like, take these colors and um, just sort of improve on them. But I'm going to set the ba just, just basic colors of what I want right now. Um, I'll just continue with the process that I've been doing. And, um, yeah. So I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna again imitate the colors that were there in the original. So this looks like some kind of. I don't know what color this uh, gold armor is, but honestly, I might change the colors of this sort of uh, lower like um, greaves to match the full armor because I feel like um, just logically thinking. Actually, I'm just gonna do it now. I think logically thinking, the um, armor at the bottom should be the same as the armor at the top because I mean, considering this is a knight, I mean he probably has the funding for a. Uh, a full set of armor um, does not have thigh armor though just has the pants um, but the, with the greaves at the bottom and the shin guards um, but I feel like it would be like that and then if anything if we want to do like a gold or bronze plating um, then it would be like as an accent to the armor and I think I'm gonna do that actually just to match the color harmony of what's shown above um, so with that in mind we're also going to do the sh sword sheath I think something dark uh, maybe I mean, I'm, I get more warm color vibes from this guy, so I think I'm, we're going to go maybe like an orange-red color for the sheath here. Um, maybe not too strong. And we'll just kind of keep everything like that. And maybe for the for the sword itself, it looks like there's a black handle here, and it, it kind of has this like kind of wavy-looking dragon-like handle. And I might add that into the line art here. Maybe we'll add it in, um, just to stay faithful to the reference that was given me. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go Opus Anchor. We're going to go black. And we're just going to make the handle a little bit fancy here. Um, we're going to erase this. And then I'm going to do something like that. Let's see which way is the, those little pieces going. It's like, like this, and then top of the handle like right here. Like that. And then let's see, bring it in. And then maybe let it curve around here. And these sort of like dragon wing like spikes kind of design here. And it, it, it's good that um, uh, I'm doing this because it makes the sword feel less like thrown on and more like a, a an actual valuable weapon. Um, rather than just like a, a standard sidearm, you know? Makes it makes him look a little bit more, I mean, he's supposed to be a royal character, so it makes a lot of sense for him to have something like this. Um, there we go, I think that's fine as far as details go. We'll do the rest of the detail in the color. Now, my inking brush is not perfect. Um, it's not as good as the Krita brush that I found. So I think I do, I want to do adjustments to like the way the size dynamics work on this brush um, still. And I, yeah, I think I want to do some work on it just so that um, uh, it has a little bit more, a little bit um, lower, uh, a little bit smaller of a minimum size because the, even with no pressure, it's kind of giving me a size of brush that's like a little bit too big. I want to be able to get it really small with light pressure. So we'll make that adjustment sometime. Now here, maybe I'll just do some lines here. Get some grip on there. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I like that. Actually, there, there should be more space for the hand, though. Even though it's facing this way, let's get a little bit more space for the hand. Yeah, like that. Okay. So I'll go back to the color now using our Opus Color Brush. And I always make sure that um, the uh, brush and the eraser are set to the same brush. In Krita also, you did not have to toggle both. You could just press E and it would turn your current brush into an eraser, but that's okay. It's interesting though, how, how many efficiencies that Krita has that are not available in Procreate. Um, there's a couple of them, the lasso fill and then also the eraser thing, the eraser toggle, that's okay.
Because I know Procreate does have a lot of power, and I just have yet to discover it. Because I know, like, the color drops in Procreate are uh, really nice. Um, and again, we'll keep everything in sort of warm colors here. I almost like moving it to, like, a more reddish, like, almost pinkish uh, color here. Like a maroon, a burgundy kind of color. There, that's nice for the wood there. Okay. So we'll color that in that way. And we're going to turn off the alpha lock. We're going to fill in that little blank piece. Okay. Anything else? The sheath um, on the lance, we'll keep it the same color. Um, lance holder, I guess. And then what else? Uh, maybe some bronze or gold accents on the sword. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll find a goldish color like this. And then we'll, we'll use this as like... Um, brighter accents on the armor as well okay there we go all right so what else um this the actual spear the blade part we'll make it like a dark blue black thing and then we'll just put some strong highlights on it um for metal i usually go with blues um so after we get all of our base colors in here, we're going to go in and try to really paint. I, I want to keep the detail to a minimum. So I'm not sure if I should do like the multiply strategy with um, the um, shadows or if I should really practice choosing colors. Honestly, I think I should practice. It will develop me better as an artist in the long run, not to rely on... Um, on uh, layer properties, but actually be able to choose a color. So we're gonna we're gonna even if it takes longer, um, in the long run it saves me time by being just better at it. So um, we'll do that. So again, I have to keep going back and forth here between the brushes to make adjustments to the line art as I go, um, and then we'll, again we'll keep switching back and forth. Oh, you know what? I did that in the wrong layer. I did that in the wrong layer. So right here is where we're gonna do it on the line art layer. It's right here that little piece of cloth, and then we go back. A lot of tapping that has to be done appropriate with the Apple Pencil. Okay. There, that's nice. Whoa, where are we now? Okay, this layer. And we'll, I mean, the, the hilt of the sword was like black here. So I guess we'll go very dark. Just a desaturated black. We'll just make it black. Now, I don't want to go all the way black because I want the line, line art to remain visible. And again, for this piece, in order to keep the line art visible, we're going to keep the lighting pretty soft and, and light and use the white as a light source. The white background. They could either be backlit or toplit or whatever, but we'll use the white as a light source. And it really makes everything sort of uh, um, fit into the piece better. So that said, I think we'll just do a standard top lighting. Um, and now we're going to get in there and paint. So let's see. I'm going to try to just improvise as I go because I don't have a whole lot of experience painting in Procreate. Um, I do like the, the way this brush flows. So um, we're, gonna, we're just going to get in there and just paint. And we're going to take this one. I usually like red for... Um, shadows on on uh, um, skin color because it makes the color it makes the skin look like um, there's some blood in there you know it makes the person look less pale um, you know not dead or anything that's too red though so we're just gonna play with the colors here um, maybe a little bit more on the warm color side even more on the purple side too and then once I get a color that I kind of like, we'll just eye drop it. And maybe we'll take our skin color though and blend in a bit more. There, this will do. So we'll just use this color and put in some shadows where they need to be. So we are painting right now, folks. Um, let's get um, an eye color in there.
Now this is anime. Do I want the eyes to be visible through the hair? Or do we want the hair color to be there? I think, I mean, anime kind of looks funky when it's like that. So I think I'm just going to put the hair like that. And then we'll get an eye color on the side. That's like 90s anime for the eye, the white of the eye to be showing through the hair. I think it looks looks better this way. Um, yeah. So I do want to put um, gold high, gold accents on his white armor here, silver armor. So we'll do that. And we're gonna erase this and keep make sure we get that alpha lock going. It already looks better with the like light shading. Here, we'll we'll just make it a little bit, you know, ornate. Just get some nice details in there. Make it look sweet. And I have to remember it's gonna be symmetrical, so we're just gonna get some gold highlights on these different pieces here. Maybe just on the edge there. Just on the edge. Yeah. Yeah, I think like that. The accents on the edges. That's that looks pretty nice. Just sort of an improv improvisational decision there. Um here on the hand. Um maybe like even like something where there's a design here, like a diamond. Yeah, diamond, that's nice. Yeah, why not? Improvise. Um, more accents here. Let's get an accent like on the edge of the elbow pad here. Accent on the edge of that. Accent at, right at the edge here. And then more accents here on the knee pads. And let's get this entire shin guard gold just to kind of be more faithful to the original Let's make our brush a bit bigger here for this spot. Something like that. Okay, so I don't have any specific topic of discussion for this one. Um, just trying to focus on the painting here. So that looks that looks pretty cool. Um, again, I don't feel the harmony of colors though. So I might take this whole layer and maybe do a color balance on it. And like maybe move things toward a certain color. Now I think I think the warm color is going to be good. Now um, let's see shadows. This is shadows. Let's do midtones. Moving the whole thing towards blue. That's not bad. But I think we're going to go warmer. So I think I think if I move the whole thing towards yellow, the whole thing towards a little bit of the red, the whole thing towards the magenta, then air, we start to feel a little bit more color harmony there. I don't want to. I think the skin is getting too yellow though. So we're going to dial this back a bit. There, that looks better. That looks much better. So notice if I undo here, yeah, it's a very slight change, but it already looks much better to me because there's like a little bit of extra red in the hue. That looks way better. Okay, so we'll continue with this. I think the redness got too much in the highlights of the hair though. So we're gonna re-choose that color and redraw the highlights in the hair. So we're gonna choose this one. I think, um, oh, so we're using white, right? I think I'm just gonna use a white brush and just very softly like brush in highlights here. I, I definitely want it to look like highlights and not like he has white hair. So we're gonna be careful here. We'll take that out and change the color slightly here, more towards the white. I think the pure white was wrong, actually. I want more just 
slightly changing the brightness here, like that. That makes more sense. We'll use pure white at the end when we do like strong highlights, especially in the armor. We're going to use some of that. Now that said, I wanted to make this more painterly, not watercolory, but like a little bit more painterly. So I'm going to start doing, I, I normally don't do this when I paint, like go into the light and start like um, changing things in the light. I normally just keep the light as just whatever base color I had. But um, today we're going to try to paint in the light, which is not usual for me. It's weird for me. But we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so here, um, I mean, this is supposed to be royal, right? So white with a purple lining. So let's change this now. So this color, I think that color of cloth is fine, but we're going to add some purple in there because that the purple is completely lost in my, in my new drawing. So I think we're going to do it this way. Um, yeah, purple on the edges. I think that I, I want to like a really a royal purple. So I want to adjust that a little bit. Yeah, that, that's a bit better. It might be too dark though. I'm going to bring it this way. That's a bit better. Maybe purple on the under on the underside completely. So if I just air, eye drop air, air drop eye drop there. Yeah, I think that looks good. Purple underneath. So that the whole um on the whole bottom of the cape is purple. That looks pretty good. And then for the top part, just like a lining. We can even maybe do like some kind of ornate design on it. I mean he's royal, we can like um uh put some design work on there. Something like like this. I used to see these designs on like my mom's furniture with these little spirals and swirls. So I'm gonna try it right now. Might make some, might make it look pretty cool. We're just gonna try it. I'm, I'm not really sure how this is gonna look. Um, the color harmony doesn't look good. I mean, it's purple, like yellowish tan. So, you know what, maybe we won't do this. Instead of that, we'll do like a thicker lining and maybe an accent color on the purple to as, as a border between the purple and the tan. And maybe even the tan color is not so good. I might be able to improve that too. So this tan color, something to go more syner uh, synergize a little bit better with purple, maybe a, uh, a darker tan. Yeah, and then we'll get white in there too. Yeah, so there, and then we'll get, we'll grab some white and just really get a big brush here. Maybe fade into the tan and then put like a pinkish lining on it. Something like this might be okay. I don't know. I'm just, I'm guessing as I go, it'll come together. Didn't have a lot of plans for the color on this guy. I mean, she did give me some creative license, so I'm um, just changing the original a bit into something that looks good for me. And I don't know, maybe this looks bad. I mean, I'll just let it evolve. I'll let it develop. It's nice to have a plan, but if I don't have a plan here, I'm just going to improvise until I think it looks okay. Until we have harmony. So here we're going to use, again, a lighter color. For mid tones, we can get much stronger highlights in the hair.
Yeah, I think once we get more detailed here, I can afford to use a smaller brush. Yeah, like that. So I should not be afraid at this point to use a smaller brush. And here we'll create a we'll, we'll create a little bit of a lining here, maybe a dark purplish pink, something like this. Maybe even lighter. Um, how about this? Mm, no, let's keep it straight. And this color doesn't work. The tan color doesn't work. I know it's supposed to be white. So let's just let's just eliminate the tan. Let's just make it white and reduce like remove any yellow hue from it. Let's actually just go straight into the purple and just make it like white here like this. Yeah. Like the tan here, I mean it's it looks rugged, but it doesn't look royal. I think the just a pure white looks a lot more royal. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so oh whoops, I accidentally colored the pants. I, I think the tan in the pants is fine. Or maybe we should just we can change that color of that to more white too. Yeah, you know what? I think the yellow just doesn't work. I think we're just gonna go white here. Yeah. And then we'll just do a shading color now, but more on the purple side, the purplish reddish side for the pants. Yeah, there we go. Things are starting to make more sense. It's coming together. Now the color is a bit um, bright here, so maybe I'll just darken the pants a little bit. Just paint that in. I know digital painters use a lot of eyedropper, and I'm, I'm starting to use it more um, in, an, in a more intuitive way to blend colors. Um, so yeah. Might want a darker color in here pretty soon. But this is this is making sense to me, you know. It's looking a lot more developed with every, you know, with every stroke, which is good. And we'll just keep going until it feels finished. This this gold can be stronger here. So let's actually start putting highlights in the gold. So um, gold highlights are usually more on the yellow side yellow white not too saturated of a yellow so let's desaturate a little bit more on the white side actually yeah let's just desaturate um let's do it this way where there's like a point in the middle like a hard edge Take this color, add some highlights here. Um, for the armor too, we can start adding some, I think shadows first actually makes more sense. So here we're gonna take a dark, you know, in this case, since we do have the, um, no, no, let's discipline ourselves. We're gonna choose colors and just get things in the right place. So I'm gonna do, um, uh, I'm gonna, I drop this color and this one's more in the, bluish uh, the greenish color we're going to go darker blue we're going to keep things looking real so we even go into the more indigo color we're going to use that as a shade uh, shadow color for the armor and armor i mean metal has a reflective uh reflective properties um so usually you're going to see high contrast strong highlights and also reflecting colors from the different pieces so for example i'm going to get a little bit of purple right in there 
And I still think we can get much stronger on this dark shadow. So maybe I'll go even darker on this one. Yeah, let's go even darker. We can strengthen the, the contrast here. Yeah, like that. That's the color. So again, I have a lot more time for this particular recording. Just waiting. I gotta cook later. Um, this is the chainmail color. Okay, that's fine. So we are just figuring out where there might be cast shadows or core shadows right now for the for this color here or occlusion shadows using all the same color for that. It's starting to look pretty good. Now, considering this is a top lighting, I'm going to be careful with where to put um, shadows. There's going to be a strong cast shadow here, shadow here under the gauntlet. Okay, under the fingers here, inclusion shadows between each one, maybe some right there, some down here, some down there, some right there. Um, let's get some stronger contrast for the pants here as well since, while we're at it. Um, yeah, that's good. This might be a little bit too saturated. We're desaturated, so more go into the blue a little bit more. Cooler colors once you get into the shadows. We can go darker. We're going to paint a little bit of the folding now. Now this is unusual for me, like, to really try to paint it rather than just use two colors. So I'm using a lot of eye drop right here. Yeah, there we go. I'm learning. A little bit too much shadow there. Get darker as we curve around the side here. And then we'll, we'll use white for highlights to sort of accentuate these folds. Like, for, Let's try it now. Let's use white. And then let's just put in some little bit of highlights there, a little bit of lights. Okay. Yeah, this is it's interesting. I, I mean, I'm, I don't normally do this, and honestly, some of it might look quite bad. But we'll keep playing, and and we'll figure it out. We're, let's improve at painting right now. I've never taken like any painting classes or painting fundamentals classes besides like basic color and design when I was like a um, freshman in high school. I was freshman in college, but um, it's something I can learn for sure. But I need to set aside time to learn, which I, I don't know if I have that kind of time. Again, we'll do a pinkish lighting, a pinkish um, accent here on the edge. It's not bad. This um, part doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe because I just need some shading in it too. We'll grab this color as well. Um. Armor color, this should be armor color right here. Breastplate with the shadow color in there too. So this is looking okay. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot we can do here. Um, I mean, we can do the chain mail, um, but I think we'll stop there. This has been a bit of a long recording. I don't want the videos to be too long where the YouTube upload might mess up. So let's just stop here and record our progress. Talk to you guys later. God bless. Bye-bye.